Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be taking all of my car parts that I've been accumulating and putting them all in the garage. Before I get ready to install them, I'm gonna go over a little bit more details on what exactly is going in the Civic build. So let's get started with this video. two parts that just came in last night from Tri-State Motorsports all the way from New Jersey. I'm so happy with the service I've received from them. They have extremely fast shipping and majority of all of my parts are always in stock. So be sure to check them out. So here we have the two pieces that was missing to the puzzle for fabrication. I got a CSF radiator along with a Skunk 2 Ultra manifold. Before we go into the garage, I wanna show you guys the manifold that came in. You all can see I got a little excited and I actually opened it last night. Many of you all may wonder why I decided to go with a Skunk 2 Ultra. This decision was actually really hard. There's a lot of different manifolds in the market and I decided to go with the Skunk 2 Ultra for all the features that it has and I love how you have the choice of getting it in this black or you can get it also in the silver. Last piece to the puzzle will be to get a throttle body for this. I'm not quite sure which size I'm going to be going with. My car currently has a k 272 millimeter throttle body. I think I'm definitely gonna have to go bigger with this setup. So I did make a post on Instagram asking everyone what throttle body they think I should run with this manifold. Majority of the answers were a 90 millimeter throttle body and I believe that's the one I'm gonna end up going with. When purchasing a Skunk 2 Ultra manifold, it comes with the gasket and everything here in a separate bag for the install. It even has the bolts included. The other part that came in yesterday from Tri-State was my CSF drag radiator. CSF is a large company. They make radiators for so many different vehicles. Their radiators are race proven and I decided to go with their drag racing model for that reason. I have not opened this one up yet, so let's take a look. This is actually pretty cool. This kit gives you the option if you want to run AN lines on your car. This kit also brings a spall fan. These fans are extremely good. I've ran them on my previous cars and I've had no issues with them at all. This is probably one of the best fans you can purchase on the market. Here we have the actual radiator itself. As you all can see, this is a very small radiator that is designed for drag racing. Now that you all have seen what came in yesterday, let's get all these parts in the garage so I can go over them in better detail. cars, many all motor cars, everyone pretty much uses their rods when building a motor. Here I have my Sains rods. These are the Honda K20 4340 Performance Series. Here's the box that they come in. If you open it, they are individually in their own boxes, which is really nice. I love the packaging on this. I would like to give a huge shout out to Sains Performance. Thank you for being a part of this build. Be sure to check out their company. I'll leave the link below to their rods. They make rods for not only Hondas, but Evos different cars check them out i'm sure they'll have rods for whatever you're looking for so the next part i have here is my m factory limited slip differential this is much needed i never had a limited slip differential causing me to always fight the wheel and you put down more power into one wheel than the other this should equal out the power my burnouts will be a lot better and overall my time should improve with just this i'm super excited i cannot wait to install this in the car and actually feel a difference here i have the cs drag radiator CSF has some great quality products I'm excited to see what the temps will be on my turbo car using their radiator and the small fan that's included I showed you guys inside what it looks like why I chose to go with this radiator and I can't wait to install it on the car I have the clutch masters 725 series it's a twin disc I'm a little nervous about this I've been working out that left leg a little bit harder in the gym to prepare myself I've actually never owned a car that has had a twin disc before I have driven a twin disc at the track once I did stall out a few times it's definitely gonna take some getting used to but I'm sure once I drive the car often it'll be like nothing Here I have the tile wastegate I actually have a tile blow-up valve as well that I'll be using on the car it's also a great brand it's used on several turbo cars I've seen a lot of GTRs actually use tile 
It's a well-known company, which is why I chose to use them on my build. Here I have the Skunk 2 Ultra Manifold. I showed you all exactly what it looks like and why I chose the Skunk 2 Ultra versus any other manifold. So I want you all to be on the lookout for the next video because I'll be taking off my RBC manifold, installing my Skunk 2 Ultra manifold, and putting the turbo back on. If you're wondering why the turbo is off the car right now, I took it off because I did not have the proper bolts to mount it from the turbo to the Sidewinder manifold. Another key component that I'll be putting on the car that I'm actually sitting on is my Kirky aluminum seat. Many people use Kirky racing seats to drag race. They may not be the most comfortable seats to some people, but they are aluminum. They are super lightweight, which is why the majority of the drag cars run them. The only problem about Kirky seats, since they are made out of aluminum, I recommend that you do not have one unless you have a roll cage. I actually did have this seat installed at one point and I drove around with it, but it's actually not safe at all. You need to have a roll cage, you need to have a bracket specifically to mount on the back of the seat, so that way it prevents it from bending. So the Kirky seat is gonna be something that I will have a custom seat rail and all of that made when the car goes to fabrication. Last but not least, I have the most important key to this whole entire build process is the actual turbo itself. Here I have the Precision 6266 ball bearing turbo. When it came to deciding on which turbo to go with, I knew automatically that I wanted to go with Precision. You all already know that Precision Turbo is one of the most popular turbos that is out there right now. I'm so excited and I cannot wait to install this. This has been my little baby that I've been holding for the longest and now I finally have to put it on the car. I can't wait to actually put it to use. When deciding on the size, I didn't want to go too small or too big as I was actually planning to street drive the car still. At this time, I'm not even sure if this car is going to be a street car. It will be cool to drive it on the street, but I think I'm going to completely be building a drag car since I'm going to be doing the roll cage and all of that. Here goes the turbo back housing on it. I can't wait to install it. So everyone, that's pretty much it for today. I wanted to show you all of my parts and go over it briefly. So now you all know exactly what I will be putting in my car. There obviously is still a lot of missing pieces. I still have to get my pistons from Arius. That's who I'm gonna be using. And have a few other parts that I'm working on getting on such as the throttle body. When building a turbo car, it's all about being patient. Something that I am not, but I'm learning how to be patient. I really wish all of this could be done overnight because I'm so excited to be back at the drag strip. I absolutely miss it, but I know that it'll all be worth it once everything is done. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video that I put together for you guys going over all of my parts. My next video, I'll be removing the RBC manifold, installing the Skunk 2 Ultra, putting on the turbo, and trying to put on pretty much as much stuff as I can so that way when I take the car to the fabricator, he doesn't have much to do. I'm hoping that the fabrication process does not take super long. Again, I'm not a welder, I can't do piping, so I'm gonna take it to somebody who can. Once the car returns for fabrication, all the piping that is made, I'm gonna have it coated, and then I'll begin building the motor. Thank you guys for watching another video, and I also wanna give a huge shout out to all of my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much. This is just the beginning. Some of you all have been here from the very beginning from when I had the S2000 that ended up catching on fire. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out along with a few of my other older videos. I'm hot, as you all can see. I live in Florida, so it's extremely hot all year long, and unfortunately our garage does not have AC. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'll see you all in the next video.
have all of my parts pretty much laid out on this table.